it's been a year already but i'm still receiving comments from my previous video people capitalizing on the fact that i said i am not sure whether this message is a cult or not and so i come back Guess what? I come back with a bang, of course. Glory to Jesus. Glory to the Most High God. A year ago, beloved, I recorded a video entitled Why I Left the Message of William Brenham, and it went viral. As I speak, it stands at 12k views. And so I promised to come back after a thorough research on the ministry of William Brenham that I was born and bred into. And through the grace of the Holy Spirit, I'm here to say why I'm never going back to the message of William Brennan. I read a scripture on my previous video uh, from Luke 22, verse 31 to 32, where Jesus said to Simon, the devil has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith fail not. When you are converted, strengthen thy brethren. That is the scripture that I opened with. And I am so overwhelmed and so excited this evening to see the manifestation of that scripture in my life. To see how God saw me stronger after the sifting. But this evening, I want us to look at the book of Philippians chapter 3 from verse 7 to 14. That is what I want to open with so as to lead the way. Glory to the Most High God. Glory to Jesus. Firstly, allow me to introduce myself to those who are new to my channel. My name is Beulah. Beulah means bride. I'm a minister of the word of God. I am born again and my sins are forgiven. I was born and bred under the ministry of William Brenham, but through the help of the Holy Spirit, I had to yield to God's divine call. I had to press towards the mark of my high calling, something I couldn't do under the ministry of William Brenham because the ministry of William Brenham views women as weak. It views women as Barbie dolls, as queens who are not worthy of the anointing, who are clueless about the word of God, who should receive the word of God from males. And so, I bless the name of the Lord for choosing me as a vessel. I am not here to clap back at the haters from the Brenham family, but I'm here this evening to strengthen my brethren. To say, after God has tested me, I have come forth shining as gold. I'm here to say, I've heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees thee. 
I'm here like David of old with Goliath's head in a plastic bag. I'm here as a victor this evening. Hallelujah. You know, it's been a year already, but I'm still receiving nasty comments from message believers concerning my video of why I left the message. I'm still shocked at how far message believers can go in the name of defending the ministry. As a minister of the gospel of Christ, I am so humbled by Jesus' words to Peter when he said, Draw back your sword. Jesus is teaching me that the battle belongs to God. He is teaching me not to fight back. That's why I said I'm not here to clap back. But I'm here to strengthen my brothers. I'm here this evening to say he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. When I started, a lot of people thought I'm, I'm in it for fame. They thought I'm here to make my channel grow at the expense of William Brenham's ministry. But ever since I've launched my YouTube channel, this is my third video about William Brenham and his ministry and his followers. All along, I've been sharing the word of God. I have more than 100 videos where I'm sharing the word of God, where I'm doing vlogs. And so I was obedient enough to wait for God, for a green light, to wait for that green light to say, now you can go back to them and set the record straight. From where I am standing, the ministry of William Brenham is like that fig tree that, the, that Jesus cursed when he was hungry. You know, he was coming with his disciples. And so he saw a fig tree. The Bible says it was no time for, for figs. And then... When he arrived, because the fig tree had camouflaged, it looked as though it's got, it got figs. It was misleading. And so, this is what you should expect in this video. This is what the Holy Spirit has shown me. That this ministry of William Brenham is like that fig tree that is cursed it will no longer reproduce it is cursed philippians chapter 3 verse 7 to 14 reads as follows but what things were gained to me those i counted laws for christ yea doubtless and i count all things but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings be made confirmable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that, for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. 
you know philippians chapter 3 verse 7 to 14 is a scripture uh, my heart has been glued to for a very long time now from last year to be precise the apostle paul says that i may be found in him not having my own righteousness which is of the law hallelujah to be found in him not having my own righteousness not thinking that i'm the bride of christ because i don't wear makeup not thinking i'm the bride of christ because i wear the longest dresses dresses ever not thinking i'm the bride of christ because i don't wear earrings not thinking i'm the bride of christ because i don't share the weight i'm at a point in my life where i am like paul i have come to know him and the power of his resurrection and so i've realized that after all you've had to say about me leaving the message after all those nasty comments after feeling the sting of rejection from my own people I've realized you, you might want to know why I'm never coming back to the ministry of William Brenham. I am born again. That is number one. My sins are forgiven. That is number two. I know who I am. That is number three. I have discovered my purpose. That is number four. I am never coming back. Perhaps you don't mean bad by the nasty comments. Perhaps you have hopes, high hopes, that I might, you know, look back. I'm never coming back. I'm pressing towards the mark of my high calling. I have found people of my destiny. In Zulu we say abantu bohambo lwami. I have connected on a deeper spiritual level with them. I've sat in halls in rooms where girls my age were sharing the word of God and just like Elizabeth to Mary I felt the child within me leaping for joy, acknowledging Jesus' superiority in them. The Holy Spirit is at work. And asking me to return to the message of the hour, the ministry of William Brenham, is like asking an eagle that once lived as a chicken to go back to being a chicken, to go back to acting like a chicken. I know better. I can no longer stoop so low. Glory to Jesus. I normally say, in order for one to see things better, they ought to step back. Stepping, stepping back grants you an opportunity to rethink your stand. It gives you a better vision of things. You cannot see the beauty of this house while you remain inside. In order for you to acknowledge, you know, the, its beauty, you need to go outside and stand afar off. From where I am standing today in 2024, I can't help but realize I was born and bred in a ministry that don't have a knowledge of who God is, but rather are clutching at straws. They are grasping at, st at straws 
ba populetsa insipedi and just as you know an apple doesn't fall far from the tree when i look at william brenham's life it was a life of clutching at straws he made predictions that never came to pass same applies to the leaders to his followers you know whenever there's an eclipse it symbolizes that the rapture is at hand whenever there's a red moon it symbolizes that the the, the, the lord is coming according to the message believers and when things don't go their way as predicted they turn the story to fit their own conclusions They happen to have an answer for every word that proceeds out of their mouth whenever they are held accountable then they there must be an answer when a marriage didn't work out they say it was a false vow When Billy Paul Brenham died I went to some William Brenham followers on Facebook and I asked them didn't you say uh, Billy Paul Brenham was waiting for the rapture instead of answering me they said what were, what have we done to you Bula why do you hate William Brenham so much Yet I needed to understand why they concluded Billy Paul Brenham is waiting for the rapture he's not going to die. To know him Paul says know him and the power of his resurrection. The reason you are you remain barren spiritually is because You do not know him you know your pastor you know your prophet you know the minister of William Brenham you have not come to the knowledge of who God is allow yourself to be held accountable for what proceeds out of your mouth message believers are like soul They like praises so much but don't want criticisms. You criticize them, they will start threatening you that you are blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Allow your thing to be tested and tried. Nobody is fighting you you know so loved praises but when he was criticized he really showed what he was made of when they, those women sang songs and said when they, they composed a song and said Saul killed um his thousands David his 10000 Saul didn't like it. He didn't like being criticized. That is how message believers are. They are like that. You'll be surprised that after this video I'm going to be blocked. I'm going to be, you know, there's there's words that are going to be said, you know, really harshful words. that are, that are going to be hard you know that are going to be pointed my way you know nasty comments are going to follow this video you know when i left the message yeah a lot really happened i thank god you know for the anointing upon my life because i was not going to do this on my own 
I was not going to make it this far on my own. I understand one preacher said you can fight the devil with an anointing without an appointment and overcome. But don't you dare try to fight the devil with an appointment without an anointing. A lot of people today, the reason they stumble and fall is because they try to fight the devil with an appointment without an anointing. The reason I genuinely, you know, in light of everything, I'm still this bold, I'm still this beautiful, you know, I, 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 I'm still, you know, in, in, in search for the things of God, the deep things of God, is because as much as I'm not yet appointed, but I'm anointed. The anointing is what kept me going. Glory to Jesus. When I left the message, I was called names. I was called that I'm a mermaid, I'm a medusa. Uh, a lot uh, was said about me. Yet when I was still a part of them, praises were sung unto me. When I was still fellowshipping with them, But I thank God of the anointing. I buried my man last year, February. And so I have been grieving. There's words of wisdom that he would share with me. You know, one thing that I have highlighted from his teachings is that you must pray to always be found in, you know, in his presence. You must always pray for his presence to never depart from you. In other words, Tavang was saying, ask God, you know, like David of old, he said, I'd rather because in your hand, there's comfort. And so, what he was trying to teach me is that when his presence overshadows you, you'll never be misled. You'll never be blind and follow the blind. David fought Goliath with an anointing without an appointment and still overcame him because it's not the appointment that counts, it's the anointing. Hallelujah. A lot of people, they run to be appointed without being anointed. That's the reason we have so many problems even at our pulpits. In my serving God, in my journey with the Lord, I have discovered that it's not what you say at the pulpit. It's what you do after climbing off the pulpit. You can preach like a victor. And live like a coward. I'm never coming back to the ministry of William Brenner. I almost lost my mind. I almost forfeited my purpose. Who are you? Do you even know who you are? Or you've lost yourself in the process of, of following, you know, after a cult. You cannot know what you are following if you don't know who you are. And you cannot know who you are if you don't know who God is. 
The book of First John chapter 1 verse 1 says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, and our hands have handled of the word of life. That is what we are preaching. We are not preaching rumors. We are not pre preaching heresies. We are eyewitnesses. As the Apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 1 verse 10 that the, the, the gospel that I'm preaching was, was not brought to me by men. I received it from the Lord. A child of God is not a parrot. I thank God that when I wanted to get married in the ministry of William Brenham, he didn't give me those lame, lousy desires because my family would have, would have had to be confined to a stationary ministry. You know, lately I find myself, um, you know, chatting to God. Like, you know, we, we, we speak like, you know, a friend with a friend, with my father. You know, I, I, I find myself telling God that if you should bless me with kids, I, I don't want my kids, you know, to, to suffer the way I suffered under the ministry of William Brenham. I, I, I want my kids to know you and the power of your resurrection. I, I, I don't want to introduce my kids to something that's going to be a curse upon their life. Something that that's that going to, you know, cause them to be depressed. You know, we, we we come from far. I come from far. And so God allowed me to go through what I went through so that my kids won't have, you know, to, to go through the same road. I'm breaking that generational curse. There is no kid of mine who's going to reach 40 without being married. There's no kid of mine who's going to think it's normal to reach 40 without a baby. I will teach them the fear of the Lord, not the fear of men. I will teach them the Holy Scriptures. I will teach them to have knowledge and understanding. Growing up under the minister of William Brenham was like growing up in ZCC. You must lack wisdom. You must lack knowledge. You know, scriptures are just taken and run with without a thorough revelation from the Lord. Take Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. It says a woman shouldn't wear that which pertains to a man. Already message believers have assumed that that scripture refers to trousers. But when Moses was, you know, talking about such, teaching about such, there were no trousers. They wore robes. There were no skinny jeans. There were no jumpsuits. There were no drag suits. Yet message believers have already concluded that Deuteronomy 22 verse 5 is all about jumpsuits. It's all about skinny jeans. It's all about drag suits. And so a woman shouldn't wear that which pertains to, the, to a man. And that scripture is not even in the fashion context. But being born in the message, you, you must lack wisdom. You must lack understanding. You must lack knowledge. Just take the scripture. Don't question it. Don't research it. That scripture is not even about fashion. It's not about clothes. Go do your homework. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 12. 
Paul never said a woman cannot teach the word of God. There is no way God can anoint you to preach his word. And then he comes and says you don't have to preach it. Like I heard God anointing me, revealing himself to me. And, you know, when I was still in the ministry of William Brenham, I'd see myself standing at the pulpit, sharing the word of God as a sister in the midst of the doctrine uh, that a woman cannot teach. I'd, I'd see visions, I'd see dreams, I'd see myself, you know, sharing the word of God. And, you know, the word would be revealed to me. You know, at times I'd, I'd be in class, but I'd receive a revelation from the Lord. I'd receive a scripture that, that would be followed by a revelation, you know, an interpretation. And I'd quickly go to Facebook and say, wow, a sermon just dropped in. You cannot take a verse and run with it. You need to play to pray for discernment. You need to pray to God for revelation, for a revelation that comes from above. You cannot be running with a scripture for all these years and then you think you are right just because you are under a ministry of William Brenham. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 3, you have come past this mountain for a very long time. It's time to turn northward. You cannot honestly be thinking that Paul was forbidding women to teach the word of God under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because if Paul said they must ask their husbands at home, what about Beulah? Who should I ask? I don't have a husband. If really Paul was referring to this, to the sharing of the word of God under the anointing, then what about that sister who is not married? Who is she going to ask? You know, typical message believers, they would say, when you are not married, the pastor is your husband, so you must ask your pastor. Gone are those days for gimmicks. We don't need to, to, you know, to be holding on to something that's just grasping at straws. You need that which is real. <coughs> Glory to Jesus. I, I was sharing in closing. I was sharing, rather I was not sharing, but I saw a, a message believer on Facebook, a brother, they wrote something about sisters not, you know, they don't qualify to be deacons. And when I quoted Romans chapter 16 verse 1 to him, he was shocked. He even said, I must stop reading other translations. I must start reading King James Version only. And I asked him, was King James Version written by God himself? And then he... He somewhat became aggressive, just like a brother who commented on my video. And then when I commented back, he said, sister, uh, I'm your brother. I'm a brother. And then I should know better than you. I thank God for opening my eyes. For loving me enough to move me away from the minister of William Brenham. Another sister said, uh, I'm blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Ever since she left the message, she backslid. And then she doesn't have peace. She's tormented on a daily basis. And you know what I said to her? I said, um, isn't it glorious, sister, that I'm not you and you're not me? I'm not tormented. I'm seated at heavenly places with the Lord Jesus. 
while you are tormented. I'm not backslid. You are backslid. And so you need to do some self-introspections. Ever since I left the message, I saw the light. I saw the light. Oh, I thank God. I saw the light. Glory to Jesus. I just want to close by reading Romans chapter 16, verse 1 to 3. I'm trying to shed some light to somebody who is willing to learn, especially to a sister whom God has called into ministry. Because one thing, sister, that you must be careful of is to try and convince people that God has called you. It was not a conference call. And so you don't need anybody approving of your calling. I used to hear this other dude, you know, he kept saying there's people who were called by God and there's those who called themselves. And I said, what about Jeremiah 1 verse 5? And then he, um, you need to know who you are. If you don't know who you are, the devil is going to make a fool out of you. You need to know the scriptures. You need to pray for revelation from God, revelations from the Lord. When you open the Bible, you need to, to, to read the scriptures with and understanding. Be ready, you know, be eager to learn. Being born in the message, you know, I, I, I became too proud. I, I, I was, you know, I, I, I chose faces. Uh, there were times where I missed out on the blessing of God because it was not packaged the way I expected. I missed out on the message from the Lord because I stumbled upon a woman preacher. I did not know the scriptures. I did not know there were, there were women deacons in the Bible. Now, here is what Romans chapter 16, verse 1 to 3 says. I just want to read it from the New Living Translation. It says, um, I commend to you a sister Fuibi, who is a deacon in the church in Sankria. Welcome her in the Lord as one who is worthy of the honor among God's people. Help her in whatever she needs, for she has been helpful to many, especially to me. Verse 3. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in the ministry of Christ Jesus. What do message believers have to say? May the Lord bless you. May the Lord open your eyes so you may see. There's more to the word of God than you can ever imagine. God does speak. All you need to do, sister, you need to pay attention to the Holy Spirit. Why? I'm never going back to the minister of William Brennan. I know better. I know who I am. And for as long as you still want to be identified with this ministry, you remain stagnant. For as long as you harden your heart, you remain without. You remain spiritually barren. You know, looking at this ministry of William Brenham, I cannot even say um, the glory is departed. You know, when we speak of Ichabod, we speak about the glory that has departed. It was there, but it departed. In this ministry of William Brenham, there was never any glory from the start. But the choice is yours. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says.